Hello everyone, and if you're watching this video in its original dropped time frame, then happy Holy Week. This message is meant to be a conclusion of our series on the beautiful Eucharist with a reflection on what it means to me to be a minister of communion, one who gives the Eucharist to individuals at Masses. That is a, a job that is shared by clergy and laity. In our parishes, there are never sufficient numbers of clergy to, uh, to be able to distribute all of the communion. And so one of our really truly beautiful traditions in the Catholic Church is to allow someone who is baptized and has received their communion and their initiation through confirmation to be co-workers at the altar with the priests and the deacons to, to share the gift of the Eucharist by being ministers of communion, either giving the host to people or giving the cup, which means that they're giving the body, the blood, the soul, and the divinity of Christ every time they minister in that way. It's an incredible gift. It's an incredible way to be deeply involved in the experience of faith that we have in the sacraments. I want to share with you something that has become a very precious and privileged gift that I've been able to, uh, to, to enjoy myself but also share with others. And that is the gift of a frame of mind to bring when, when distributing communion, a, a, a frame of mind that allows me to feel deeply, fully engaged in not only my role in sharing God and, and Christ's own body and blood with others, but also understanding their role in my faith. So when I give communion to someone, I do what all of us do. I hold the host in front of my face between my face and their face, and I say, the body of Christ. We used to say, 40 or 50 years ago, this is the body of Christ, which is a, a fine thing to say, but the church no longer has us say that because saying this is the body of Christ, while 100% true, is limiting the sense of what it means to say the body of Christ, because the body of Christ is the consecrated host from Mass. But it is also something more than that in the church. That's why we hear St. Paul saying, we are one body in Christ. We are ne neither Jew nor Greek. We're not just slaves or free people. We're not women or men. We're one. We're one body in Christ. You've heard that scripture, and you've heard the scripture that says, just as the, the pinky cannot say to the elbow, I don't need you, so we cannot say to one another, I don't need you. The liver can't say to the throat, I don't need you. The gallbladder can't say to the ear, who needs you? We are one body. And so, this image of Christ being the head and us being the, the limbs or the, the members, the components of the body, is related to the image of Christ being the vine and us being the branches, all one, all one. So when we say the body of Christ, we're saying this is the body of Christ and this is the body of Christ. Does that make sense? It's pretty powerful, isn't it? This is the body of Christ, surely, truly, substantially, really. But this is the body of Christ too, in its own very real way. We are members of one body, receiving one body. St. Augustine said this well. He said that when we receive the Eucharist, we are called to become what we see and receive what we are, the body of Christ. We're trying to become what we see and receive what we are, 
the body of Christ. That's why we no longer say this is the body of Christ, because it, it would disrespect this dimension. That's why we would never, when saying this dimension, say this is the body of Christ, as if that's the exhaustive sense of the body of Christ, as if that's all there is. No, no, this is the body of Christ, and this is the body of Christ. And so we say the body of Christ. Here's where that gets really exciting. When I'm placing the host between us, I am able to say to that person whose face is ringed with this Eucharist, this, they become they become the holder for the Eucharist. They become what on the altar during Eucharistic adoration is called the monstrance, right? Monstrance from the, the Latin word for showing, mostrare. The word to show is the monstrance. We show Christ in the monstrance during Eucharistic adoration. Well, the same thing is true when I hold the host between myself and the other person. They become the monstrance for me. I see the host right there between my face and theirs so that their face is the monstrance holding Christ. And I say, looking at the monstrance that they are, the body of Christ, and they look back at the host, which is the body and blood, the soul and divinity of Jesus, just consecrated on the altar, and they say, amen, the body of Christ. Do you see the layers? Do you see the richness to that? Watch this. Then they take the body of Christ into their body. The body then contains the body. And now they're living tabernacles. They're living tabernacles on two feet. Anywhere they go, they're containing the Eucharist as if they are not just a monstrance, but a tabernacle holding all of Christ right within them. Isn't the, the complexity and beauty of that just staggering? So as we close out this series on the beautiful Eucharist, let us consider how beautiful the Eucharist is in our lives. The, the feeling that we get after receiving the Eucharist. The, the connection that we have with each other through the Eucharist. The, the incredible gift of having Christ within us so that we're, we're inundated with Christ. We're not only surrounded by God all the time, but once we receive the Eucharist, God is in us too. So we are drenched in Christ, saturated in Christ, like a ship that's sunken in the ocean, but we've got the ocean in us too. We're inundated, we're flooded. We're submerged in the best possible way. May God continue to bless you and bless me as we go through this incredible gift of faith that is nourished each and every week through the Eucharist. Thank you for being on this journey with me and Matthew Kelly and all of those small groups in our parish and beyond. May God bless you all.